What about mixing two low end elements like a kick and an 808 or a kick and a bass? My problem is with people who say, you can't have your kick and 808 hit at the same time. There's no way those two things can both hit in the same frequencies at the same time and both sound good. That's not true. People using side chaining as a band aid to me is lame. Using side chaining as a production technique, go ahead. If it's creating a sound that you like or it's doing something to the feel of the track, that's great. But I think a lot of time people use sidechain as a band-aid. Some people sometimes pick a bad kick with a bad 808. Or their kick and their 808 aren't lining up the same way. Their kick might be behind the 808. The 808 might be too far behind the kick. There's so many different things that might make it so your sh** is not hitting really hard. Oh, not punching. Now. A lot of times, to be honest, these days, maybe you don't need a kick. If you're making some trap shit, you're making a Yeet beat, a Cardi beat, some shit for Drake, some shit for Kanye, there's a world you might not even need a kick. And you're trying to side chain a kick in an 808 to make your 808 punch harder, but you just need a better 808 with more attack on it or a better 808 sample that punches harder. Because a lot of the best shit right now is no kick. When people are saying that they're side chaining a kick to their 808, I'm wondering, are you just looking for an 808 that hits harder and that's why you're trying to add a kick? Or... Are you picking a bad kick with the wrong 808 and they're not matching up so they flam or they don't sound clear? Or are you side chaining because you like the effect of how that sounds and you like the fact that the kick hits first and the bass swells after, like a lot of drill stuff or a lot of other stuff. But what I think is the 808 and the kick can hit at the same time. So for the person who asked that question, how do you make those two things work? Your problem might not just be your kick and your 808. Could it be? Yeah, you might need a better sample. You might need a better bass or a better kick drum. But sometimes there might be another sound from your keys, another percussion thing from your drums, even a hi-hat that has a lot of low end randomly. There's a lot of other things that might be getting in the way. A really good rule just for everybody is get rid of your lows and a lot of stuff that doesn't need lows. Should you all the time cut out all the low end from everything? No. But if it's the main sound in your beat or the main lead element, the main chords, the main synth, whatever it is, the main sample, if you get rid of 50 hertz, 60 hertz, 70 hertz, all that low bullshit, no one's going to miss it. And all you're going to notice is that your bass starts to ring through. Your kicks and your 808s start to ring a little bit more. They start to hit a little bit harder. Not everything needs to have a full frequency span all the time. Sometimes you can cut out some highs, cut out some lows, and things start to fit in the mix a little bit better. When you look at this, even though it's not super loud, is there a bunch of information over there? Do you see all that information of low end? This, this guitar is producing low end. If we go over here and we click, you hear all that? Is it super loud? No, but it's in the beat. And that's all low end. That's all shit that's not the main bit of the sound that we need. So if I go like this and I take a really hard cut, let me ask you a question. Does this sound any different at all? I'm turning it on and off. Doesn't really sound any different, right? This guitar basically still sounds the same. You're still getting all the info. You're still getting everything. But now we've cut out a lot of shit. We just got rid of a bunch of unnecessary low end bullshit, nasty noise that was being made in our beat, but this guitar still sounds great. It still sounds exactly like it sounded when we drag it in. What does that make you think about all your beats when you've never done EQ? How much is probably adding up shit from the guitars, shit from the drums, shit from basses, shit from everything. You have these little frequencies that you might not even be listening to on that one instrument. You cut out some of that low end of the synth and your 808 is gonna get way bigger. My kick now isn't fighting with any of this information. The only thing that's being heard now in that small frequency band is my kick. Nothing else in the song is playing except for that kick in the low end. So my low end is clean and solid. Let's say you're doing stuff with a lot of guitars, a lot of vocals, a lot of 10K to 15K high end stuff. You might want to start getting rid of sh from your bass sounds or from some of the more powerful stuff. You might want to cut some highs. I'm not saying to do this with everything, but I don't need any of that. My kick doesn't sound any different. My kick's not punching way better now. It's the same, but I just got rid of a bunch of noise. Your clap should be the only thing smacking. You know what I mean? Like your clap shouldn't be fighting with the pokey sh that's going on in your lead sound because then your clap doesn't hit as hard. Your 808 shouldn't be fighting with your piano because then your 808 can't hit. Your kick in your 808 
shouldn't be fighting with each other. And that's why people side chain because they figure there's no way that those two things can both punch in the same place in the same EQ curve and work together, but they can. It doesn't mean one thing goes in every EQ band. All your vocals and your pianos and your drums Thank you. are all going to be hitting at 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz at the same time. But it's just about how you stack things up. Cut some low end. Cut some high end. Cut some things that hurt or things that are getting in the way of other shit that don't need to be. Hit down.